Hi, I'm Eric Baer, the Customer Technology Specialist out of Phillipsburg, Kansas, and you're going to be going over the uh, display setup for your 2630 and Gen 4 displays. In this video, we're going to go over your display setup for your 2630. Um, this, for example, we're going to assume it's going to be a Finesse 670 combine. So we're going to start the main menu in the lower right. And anytime you go out to do any operation, we need to make sure that the display documentation is set up correctly. We're going to start in the main menu lower right. We're going to go to GS3. And we need to make sure that G, H, and I are filled out correctly. If we don't do this, then it's, it's not going to paint behind us and any of our maps aren't going to reflect the correct data. So we're going to start in letter G. We have to have our client, our farm, and our field filled out. And then we also have to have our task. So we're going to change it to harvest and change our crop season to 2020. So these are the most important things here on this page. Everything else is optional, but we have to have our tasks and we have to tell it the, the correct place we're at. So that's G, our resources. So we're going to go to letter H, which is our equipment. And then we're going to have our machine tab and our header tab at the top. So our machine, we need to go and we select the model. And then as well, uh, the offsets here have to be correct. The offsets determine our recording points. So the, the display needs to know the relation of the receiver to the combine and then from the header to the combine. So get your tape measure out make sure that these measurements here are correct. Um, and if you need help, it does give you some places to measure from. Okay, so now that we've filled out our combine correctly, we're going to go to our header. So in this example, we have a 630 flex draper. We tell it the model and our name, and again, we need to make sure that the offsets are entered in correctly. Um, as well, down here at the bottom, uh, we need to make sure that the widths are correct. If you get to this page and the widths are not correct, most of the time it's it's because the combine setup hasn't been complete. So if we go into our combine settings and we set the header uh, there, then it shows up correctly here in the or the equipment. Okay, so now we're going to go to our documentation. So in order for it to paint, we need to tell it exactly what's what's being harvested. So we should only have the harvest tab at the top. If we have more than harvest and more than new, it's not going to document correctly and it's, it's probably not going to paint for you. Uh, we have harvest, so we're going to go to change harvest settings. Anytime you see that little asterisk, it means that there has to be something entered into that box, otherwise it's not going to paint. So for our crop type, we're going to go down to wheat. I'm going to put in a brand, so again, we don't have to because there's not an asterisk, but we see here by variety, we have to have something in that box. So I'm going to come in here and put in a generic variety. Um, so now that we're talking about varieties, there is a variety locator available. So what that is, if you're not aware, it's, it's where we create a file uh, based off our planting maps that shows the, the correct varieties. So that way we can track varieties as they're harvested through the field. Um, it's a separate file that has to be made. But if you do have variety locator, um, make sure we check that box. And I always find it convenient that uh, it beeps at you when you change uh, varieties. So I go ahead and check that, that box there. Residue management, not super required. Um, but if you do want to document how it's, how it's being put down, you do have that option. So... On this page again, we have our crop type and our variety entered in. So we're gonna go and hit accept. Here on this page, we do have the options to, to document our loads. So if you wanna keep track of which loads you're going to the bin or the co-op or whatever the case, that is an option. So if you do wanna create a load name and a destination, you want her to put in bin or north bin or Whatever the case, you do have that uh, that option. And I always check the auto increment loads, so that way every time you unload, it automatically switches it and documents the next next load as soon as it uh, finishes unloading. So your GH and I, so that's your basic setup. 
I always like to go here to di Diagnostics, go down to Recording, and this just tells us everything we need in order to, to document or to paint. So we have our field properly defined, our task defined, and harvest, we have that yes there. So this is just a good check or a good place to go to make sure that everything is, is set up as far as the, the documentation. So now we're going to go into our combine setup. So we'll go to main menu, lower right. We're going to go to our combine. So we're just going to hit on, on all the, the combine setup. So our F button, this is our, I think that is the main harvest page. So I'm going to skip down here to letter H, which is our setup. And we're going to go through each of these uh, icons here on the right. But we're going to change our crop. And we can change our, our threshing conditions or straw conditions. These are just bases for, for where our combine settings will be based on what we tell it here. Down at the bottom, this is our, our grain loss calibration. So for our, our vision track, that's what this is setting. So if we look on our corner post, those bar graphs that, that catch the, the grain as it's coming out of the shoe and out of the, you know, after it's done threshing, we need to calibrate that based on our our field conditions. So we need to go out and we need to set the combine. We need to be happy about where it's at as far as grain loss. And then we need to come in and hit that calibrate button. That sets the, the bar graph to, to where we want it and um, where it needs to be. So just know that's where we find it here on this page. But it's it's important to, to just not go with, with what we had set last year. We need to set the combine the way we need it and then come in here and push that button and tell it we want it to maintain this level of of grain loss if your bar graph is bouncing all over the place or uh, if you feel it's not bouncing enough we can come in here to the sensitivity and adjust the sensitivity directly reflects on that bar graph that we see in our corner post so go back into our setup our tank level we can set what's full and what's not here on this page. Pretty straightforward. Anything that having to do with our grain tank is going to be under A. Go to B. Again, pretty straightforward. So we're going to control our auger functions. C, that's our, our residue management. Go down to D, which is our moisture setup. This page is, is pretty important. We need to make sure our moisture alarm is on so that way when it gets out of the specified range that it's going to tell us that um, our moisture is off. Our moisture correction, so if we do need to put in offset if our moisture is is off, so we get out our, our moisture or, or get the uh, feedback from co-op and, and it is off, that's where we can come in here and put in our, our offset. So if it needs to be a negative number to move the moisture down or a positive number to move the moisture up we can come in here and we can put in that offset if we're having trouble with our moisture sensor if if we maybe have a, a 70 series combines that are kind of notorious for it we can come in here because we have to have moisture in order to, to document our yield we can actually come in here and it's kind of a workaround of if our moisture sensor isn't working, we can come in here and do a fixed moisture, and we can tell it we're, we're picking, um, and it's this specified moisture, just so we can get by and, until we can get it fixed. Just know that is kind of a, a handy little workaround if you need to. But that's where we, we set up our moisture alarms and, and all of our corrections there. So, so we go to our letter H, which is our ACA setup. Just know that we can go in here and we can save presets. So if we want to come in here and have maybe a different preset for uh, wetter grain versus our drier grain and save specific settings, that is an option. That way it's easier to flip back and forth between your, your combine settings and not having to redo all of them all over again. We do have the ability to go in there and save those. So if we hit that setup button, this actually tells us the outside configurations, which is kind of handy, especially if you've got a newer operator. Um, tells you what the outside should look like in order to, to harvest that specific crop. So that's what that little um, arrow and setup button is there on the bottom. But here on this page, again, this is a handy place to go and, 
and set up our, our machine specific settings. So we're going to go back to F, um, which is our main combine page. Let's go down to letter I, which is our header setup. And for this example, it's not reflecting the correct head, but this is where we would go and we would tell it which head we have on the combine. Uh, if we go down here to H, which is our automatic header height uh, settings, we want to make sure that if we have that functionality that, that they get checked because we want our header to automatically do what it, we want it to do. So if we check these different boxes, we turn on the, the automated functions for our head. So we we'll go back to F. And as we get ready to go out to the field, especially if we're hooking up to a new head, uh, there's going to be a lot of calibrations that are going to need to be done. So we're going to go to our diagnostics, our letter B. So here's where we find all of our calibrations. So especially the beginning of the year, it's, it's recommended to go through and, and do a header calibration for sure. These are pretty straightforward. It, it walks you through the steps as to exactly what you need to do and when you need to do it. But just know, I mean, a lot of guys miss it, but we got to go to the book and the wrench and then do our calibrations to find those. So check out our other vid videos that talk specifically about our yield um, calibrations and active yield. But other than that, if you do have questions, if, if you click on those, uh, a lot of these are done, usually done once, but some are recommended that you do once a season. We also have some uh, some diagnostics, some basic diagnostics that it's good to know about. So if we click on the book and the wrench, we hit that drop down. There's, if we're having any trouble with our header, it's not adjusting correctly, or our moisture is off, that sort of thing, or our yield isn't showing correct, we can come in here and we can do some of these tests. Um, a lot of guys kind of don't know about these or they, they glance over them. Um, but these do help us find out some of the common problems that guys come across. So just know that this is an option is if you do run into problems and you, and it might be a while before the shop gets out, this, this can help us narrow down what the problem could be before we have to have somebody come out. Just know that that is an option. So the last icon that I want to go over is down here on the bottom, letter J. This is our engine load. We want to be up there and we want to be harvesting and putting as much product through that, that combine as possible without doing any damage. So this bar graph, we want to be as high up in that green as possible. Just know that this icon is also available on your corner post, but if you do want a, a specific look on this, that, that icon does bring you to that that bar graph. So with that, um, that should uh, be everything you needed to, to do to get your display set up. If you have any questions, feel free to let us know. Thanks for watching our videos. If you do have any questions this harvest, uh, feel free to give us a call.